the Lord. Welcome to another teaching session on our platform. Dr. Namdi Odia is my name, and I thank you for taking time to join us on our session today. Uh, may the Lord bless you richly in the name of Jesus Christ. We've been dealing with the subject, the laws of advancement. This has been the focus of our teachings for the month of June, the laws of advancement. And last week we spoke about the law of absolute dependence, the law of absolute dependence. And we made it clear that it's important in our journey of life that we learn to partner with the Spirit of God. How well we are able to partner with Him determines how far we go and how well we do in our journey of life. Praise God. Today we're going to be discussing a different law another absolute of this kingdom if you desire to make any kind of advancements or progress in this side of life you must respect this law and we're going to be discussing the law of value the law of value let's pray father we thank you for another opportunity to come under your word we ask that as we seek to know you better that you reveal yourself unto us in the mighty name of jesus thank you king of glory in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome again. The law of value. And our anchor scripture is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16. Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 all the way down to 16. I read Christ speaking to us here. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned. In other words, when the salt loses its ability to add flavor, then what use is the salt? If the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Verse 14, he continues, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. Why? That it may give light to all who are in the house. So our job is to give light to our environment. Light that cannot give light is of no value to nobody. Praise God. That it may give light to all that are in the house. Verse 16, he concludes, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The law of value. Praise God. In the world of commerce or the world of marketing, there is what is called product value. Now, product value, watch this very carefully. This is important for where we're going. Praise God. Product value is the benefit a customer gets by using a product to satisfy his need. Praise God. Minus the cost of manufacturing the product. Let's go through this again. Product value, this is a simple definition. Product value is the benefit a customer gets by using a product to meet his needs. Minus associated cost. Of production praise God that means what defines the value of a product is the capacity of that product to meet the needs of the customer what defines the value of any product is the capacity of that particular product in meeting the capacity of that product in meeting the needs of of the customer a product that does not have capacity to meet the needs of the customer is of no value to the customer praise God so it's in the ability of the product to meet the needs of the customer that defines the value of the product in the eyes of the customer praise the Lord a product is only as valuable as its ability to meet the needs of the customer very important a product is only as valuable as its ability to meet the needs of the customer. The more of the needs the product can meet, the more valuable that product becomes in the eyes of the customer. Praise God. I'm trying to build a foundation here for where we're going. The more of the needs of the customer the product is able to meet, the more the product becomes valuable in the eyes of the customer 
of the customer now they are willing to pay the price for it why because it has the ability to meet their needs no customer will pay any price for a product that cannot meet any of their needs praise God it's all about meeting needs so value is a function of meeting needs or solving problems of or making lives better say that again very important value is a function one of meeting needs two or of solving problems three ultimately making lives better this is what defines the value of a product so when Apple for example manufactures a new phone now they have to show the customer what this new phone can do as compared to the one they had before that is the task of marketing now they have to convince the customer that this new phone that we have manufactured can do more things for you can meet more needs for you can solve more problems for you and ultimately make your life better in the context of uh, cell phones than the one we manufactured before that means that the new phone has to come with better technology it has to have the capacity to meet needs that the previous ones could not meet solve problems that the previous one could not solve and ultimately make the life of the customer easier and better praise God this is what defines the product the value of the product in the eyes of the customer praise God same thing with vehicles when auto auto manufacturers manufacture a new car or a new version of a car for that new version to have a higher value in the eyes of the customers it has to have the ability to do something more praise God it has to come with features that the one before it did not have so what gives that new version higher value in the eyes of the customer is number one the new version the new car has the ability to meet certain needs that the previous one could not meet praise God so value is a function of meeting needs praise the Lord so also it is in our Christian work every one of us we have been called into this world for a purpose we are products of God sent down into this realm for a purpose for an assignment what now makes us valuable in the eyes of those we are sent to is our individual ability to meet their needs praise the Lord it's all about meeting needs meeting needs what makes you appealing what makes you valuable or what defines your value in the eyes of those you are sent to is your ability to meet their needs solve their problems and ultimately make their lives better praise God Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16 we read earlier Christ said to us say you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? He said, it is then good for nothing. It is then good for nothing. So it is not enough that salt is salt. It has to fulfill its purpose. It is the ability to meet the needs of those that use it that defines the value of the salt. Praise God. There are salts that kill, so it's not enough to be a salt. So also, it's not enough that you are born again. It's not enough that you are saved or you are in Christ. You must have the ability to build up value on the inside of you to be able to meet the needs of men. Praise God. Your ability to shine light on your environment is what defines your value in the eyes of those within your sphere. Praise the Lord. He said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do men light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house verse 16 he said then let your light sh so shine let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven so it's all about meeting needs value is a function of meeting needs praise the lord please never forget that we live in a world that is motivated by solution to problems. We live in a world that is motivated by solutions to problems. That is why every endeavor under the sun is motivated by meeting needs. Let me put it this way. Every endeavor of men, everything men do under the sun has one purpose. 
to meet their needs, solve their problems, and ultimately make their lives better. It's the reason why people go to school. Why? They want to solve a problem, meet their needs in the future, and make their lives better. It's the reason why people go to financial institutions to borrow money or to learn to borrow money. They want to make their lives better, ultimately solve a problem or meet a need. Praise the Lord. It's the reason why people go to work. People go to work. There are people who don't like to go to work, yet they have to go. Why? Because the job is meeting some needs, solving some problems, and ultimately the job is making their lives better than it was before. Praise the Lord. So it's all about meeting needs. And watch this very carefully. It's the same reason why people come to church. People don't just come to church for the sake or for the fun of coming to church so they can just come, dance, socialize, and feel good in the moment. It's good. It's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not why men come to church. They come to church to address their problems. They come to church to address the crisis of their lives. They understand that there are needs they, they have, problems in their lives that only the church can address. So that's why they come. Praise the Lord. So every activity under the sun, every action of men on the earth is motivated by one thing. They are trying to meet their needs solve their problem and ultimately make their lives better praise god this is why only men of value rise in this world only men of value rise in this world because one thing the world is looking for is answer to their crisis so only men who have built up capacity to address the crisis of life rise in life praise the lord Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 3. He said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Say, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, a problem, and deep darkness the people. This is a problem. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Verse 3, he said, The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Very important scripture here, verse 3. He said, The Gentiles shall come to your light. Notice, he didn't say the Gentiles shall come to you. He said the Gentiles shall come to your light. So they are not coming to you as a person. They are coming because you carry solution to the crisis of their lives. That is why men always gravitate towards where they can find solutions to their problems. Men always gravitate towards where they can find solutions to their problems. If you have the answer to their problems, they will come to you. My father called me once some time ago and said, son, please call your mom and talk to your mom. Too many people come to the house. Praise the Lord. And I said, well, you married a giver. She's always giving. She's giving out stuff. Always giving out stuff. And because she's always giving out stuff and giving out food, people will always come to the house. Men will always gravitate towards where they can find solutions to their crisis. If you have the answer, they will come to you. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the scripture here. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. That's a problem. He said, But for you, the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you he said gentiles verse 3 gentiles shall come to your light and to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to your light notice he did not say gentiles shall come to you they are not coming to you so it's not enough that you are a child of god it's not enough that you're redeemed you're saved you can speak in tongues they are all wonderful things but that's not what makes them come he said gentiles shall not come to you they shall come to your light so your light that is shining the intensity or the brightness of your light is what attracts them towards you praise god mark chapter 1 verses 36 to 37 mark chapter 1 36 to 37 Peter here saying, Simon, said, and Simon and those who were with him, Christ, they were looking for Christ. They were always looking for him. And Simon and those who were with, with Christ, with him, searched for him. 
Verse 37. Now, when they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. Friends, there are people that the poor are looking for. There are also people that the rich are looking for. But I have found out that there are people on this earth that both the poor and the rich look for. Praise. May that be you in the name of Jesus. You see, all people, everyone is looking for you. When Christ was on the face of the earth, everybody came to him. A centurion came to him, Matthew chapter 8, and began to plead the case for his servants. A centurion, a Roman soldier full of pride. Proud people, Roman soldiers at that time, yet in the midst of pride, he swallowed his pride and came to Jesus. Why? Value. He knew that Christ had the answer to a crisis in his life. Praise the Lord. So he came. It does not matter who you are or where you are from. If you have the goods, they will come to you. Praise the Lord. Centurion came to him. Nicodemus, a scribe, came to him. Jarius came to him and began to plead for his own daughter. Praise the Lord. All uh, people from all walks of life, both the rich and the poor. Remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus, a rich guy, a multi-millionaire, climbed the tree. As embarrassing as it was, he didn't care. He climbed the tree to encounter Jesus, swallowed his pride and swallowed his dignity and climbed on top of a tree to encounter a man. Why? Value. Praise God. If you have value, men will always come to you. I pray that the Lord will give you grace to build value on the inside of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Friends, it's all about value. Men will always gravitate towards wherever they can find solutions to the problems of their lives. If you carry the solutions to the problems of their lives, they will find you and they will stay with you and they will bring their friends, they will bring their family and they will bring their resources. Praise God. In John chapter 1, uh, from verse 36 all the way down, John chapter 1. Now, Christ was passing through and um, John the Baptist looked and saw Christ and he said to his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. As soon as he said that, the Bible says that the disciples of John left John and followed Christ. Why would they leave John and follow another man? They saw a greater light. Praise God. Hallelujah. They saw a greater light. So they left their master and followed Christ. Now, one of them was Andrew. The Bible says that when Andrew found out, when he saw the value in Christ, the first thing he did, he went to look, look for his brother Simon and called Simon to come and join Jesus. Jesus did not go looking for Simon. It was another man who saw value in Christ that went by himself and called his own brother and brought him over to Jesus. Now, when Christ found Philip, the Bible says that Philip went and looked for Nathaniel, his friend. Praise God. So Philip saw what uh, Andrew and Simon saw and said, wait a minute, there is something here. And he did not want to stay there by himself. He left Christ and went to get his friend Nathaniel and brought him over to Jesus. Praise the Lord. When you have value on the inside of you, men will come to you and they will refer others to you. Praise God. There are restaurants I've been to, and after eating the food, I swore I was never going back there again. But there are also restaurants I've been to, and after going there for the first time, I've been there multiple times. I've been there with my wife. I've been there with my friends. I've been there with some colleagues at work. Praise God. Why? Value. People will always go to where they can find value. May you become a man or woman of value in the name of Jesus. Remember the woman at the well of Jacob, John chapter 4. She encountered Jesus, and they began to have, a, have this encounter. At the end of the encounter, she saw light. Her life turned around. In that moment, and just one encounter with one man, everything about her life turned. Her eyes opened. Praise God. Now, she ran into town. She left the water, she, the water pot. She came to fetch water. She abandoned her water pot. It was no longer important. She had found something in a man. Praise God. She ran into town and called all the men because she knew all the men. She called all the men to Jesus. Christ did not have to go looking for the men of the town. While he was at the well of Jacob, this woman went into town and brought, brought all the men to him. The men came to Jesus and the encounter they had with Christ, they saw light. Praise God. And they went into town now and brought the entire town to Christ and begged him to stay with them for a season. What did they see in him? Value. Friends, 
people will always come to where they find value. Hallelujah. People will always come to where they find value. And when they find value, they will bring their friends, they will bring their family, they will bring their resources. Praise God. This is the principle behind wealth transfer. Very important. This is the principle, the idea behind wealth transfer. When the Bible talks about wealth transfer in scriptures, it's not just because you're confessing it. The wealth of the Gentiles belong to me. Yes, it is true. Confession is good. It has its place. Prayer is good. It has its place. But that's not enough. The world will not just hand over their resources to you. There must be something you are doing to make their lives better. Praise God. May you become that person of value in the name of Jesus. May you become the light in your environment in the mighty name of Jesus. As I close on this uh, first session, one of the pastors in Africa, uh, Pastor Reverend Sam Adeyemi, uh, was sharing something uh, on one of his messages. Now, he said that uh, the Lord had showed him, before he started his ministry, the Lord had showed him the picture of the members of his church. They were all dressed in suits. They were all looking so nice, fancy cars at the parking lot. He saw this picture, this dream of what his ministry was going to look like. So he was excited. So when he started the ministry, after a while, he began to observe, wait a minute, this picture, this current reality does not align with what God showed me. I said, Lord, what is going on? This is not what you showed me. These people look tattered, come dressed up in white, in, in, in regular shirts, jeans. Nothing looked like what he saw in the vision. I said, Lord, what is going on? This is not what you showed to me. And the Lord said to him, what I showed to you is what they can become if you do your job. Praise God. So he, when he heard that, he went to work. He began to build value on the inside of them and build value on the inside of those guys. He began to teach them on entrepreneurship, how to start your business. You can do it. You don't have to do this. How to save money, how to make money, how to build value on yourself. He was teaching them the things that would make their lives better. And as he was making their lives better, these guys were taking the steps and actually becoming what God had showed him in the beginning. Now today, as those guys have become so blessed by God, they are now so blessed that they have become great blessings to the ministry. What he poured into them returned back to him. Friends, it is what you pour out to men that return back to you. Praise God. May you become the woman and the man that God has designed you to be. And when men come to you, I decree and declare, may they find Christ in you. May they find solutions to their problems in you. May men glorify God because of you. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back to continue the broadcast, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our second segment of today's teaching session. Uh, we've been dealing with the subject, the law of value. The law of value. And we started by saying that the value of a product is defined by the capacity of the product in meeting the needs of the customers. No product can carry value beyond what it can do for men. Praise God. Hallelujah. So also are we in Christ. We have been sent here as products from heaven. But it's our individual capacity in meeting the needs of our environment that defines our value in the context of our environment. Praise the Lord. It's all about your value. Men will only value you to the degree to which you are able to meet their needs. Men will only value you to the degree to which you are able to meet their needs, solve their problems, and make their lives better. Praise the Lord. Why do you think Pharaoh handed over Egypt into the hands of Joseph? Praise God. It was value. Value. This young man carried the answers to the problems nobody else had the answer to. Praise God. So no wonder when he got to the house of, of, um, of Potiphar as his slave, Potiphar handed him, the, handed him the key to the house. He left there when they took him to prison. He got to prison. The jailer handed over to him the key to the prison house. Praise God. When he left prison and ended up in the palace, the king handed over the key to the nation into the hands of Joseph. Everywhere he went to, the entire environment was surrendered to him. Why? Value. This young man had the answer to all the crises of Egypt. And because he was the only one that had the answer to all the crises of Egypt, no one in Egypt carried value like Joseph. Praise God. He said, in as much as God has shown, this, shown these things to you, there is no one as wise as you on the entire land. Joseph, take over. Let me show this, share this with you. 
Do you know that at that time there was a lot of segregation going on in Egypt? Egyptians and Hebrews were not mingling together. They did not even allow them to stay in the same place. It was an abomination for an Egyptian to eat on the same table with a, a Hebrew. Praise God. Let me show you something in scriptures here. Genesis chapter 43 verse 32. Genesis 43 verse 32. So they set him a place by himself. And them by themselves. The Egyptians. They apportioned a, push, a place for themselves and set a separate place for Joseph by himself. Praise God. So they set him a place by himself and them by themselves. And the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves. Because the Egyptians could not eat food with the Hebrews. For that is an abomination to the Egyptians. Can you imagine that? It was an abomination for an Egyptian to eat on the same table with a Hebrew. So they will a portion a part to their, own, to their own selves and give the Hebrews a different section. Praise the Lord. That was why they never lived together in town. Every time they dwelt, there was always a portion of land allotted to the Hebrews alone because it was an abomination for them to mingle together. That was the dimension of the segregation that was taking place in Egypt at the time. Yet in the midst of segregation, the king of Egypt handed the entire key to the nation to one Hebrew boy. Why? value friends it does not matter where you're from what you have done in your past it does not matter who your father is or what your father's name is nothing of those things matter it does not matter your color your gender or your race as long as you have the goods you have the answers to the crisis of life men will come to you praise the lord i have met a neurosurgeon I ran into this neurosurgeon who was one of the best in his field. Praise God. All people were traveling from different areas of the nation to come and see him. This guy, when he's talking, you could barely hear what he's saying. His accent is so thick that you could barely understand what he's saying. Yet, regardless of how thick his accent is, everybody, all colors, were coming from different parts of the nation looking for this guy to address their needs. Why? Because he had the capacity to deliver. Nobody cares about your looks. Nobody cares about your gender. Nobody cares about where you are from or how long your name is. As long as you have the answers to their crisis, they will come to you. Praise God. Another guy that comes to mind is Daniel. Daniel is another interesting personality. Daniel was a Hebrew boy that was captured from Israel at the time of slavery and brought to Babylon. Praise God. They killed his parents and they took him, to, and they took him into slavery with the rest of the young men. They didn't need the old ones because they couldn't do much. So they took all the young men who were able to do the work as slaves and brought them to Babylon. Daniel was one of them. Now, Daniel was a young man, even though he was captured as a slave, that young chap kept on building himself in slavery. Praise God. He said, I, Daniel, I understood by books. I understood by books. So Daniel was studying even in slavery, building capacity into himself. He knew that his location was not going to determine his destination. He knew that where he was coming from does not determine where he ends. He knew that it was not his nature, it was not his uh, title, it was not where he was from, whether he was Hebrew or not Hebrew. Daniel knew that all that did not matter. He knew that what mattered was capacity, value. So he was studying, reading books, building value into himself. So when a problem showed up in, during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, the only man that had the answer to the problem was Daniel. Praise God. A Hebrew slave was the only one in the entire town that had the answer to the problem. The king had the dream and could not remember his dream. So he needed someone that would not only interpret the dream, but someone who will recollect the dream for him. Praise God. And Daniel said, give me time. Daniel went into the spirit, got captured the dream and came back, gave the king the dream and the interpretation of the dream. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody else in town had capacity to deliver. It was only this one young man, Daniel. And it didn't matter that he was a slave. It didn't matter that he was Hebrew. Yet the king of ne uh, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, bowed before Daniel and promoted Daniel. Let me show you something in scriptures here. Daniel chapter 2, verses 46 to 48. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense, incense to him. Daniel became a god. Verse 47, the king answered Daniel and said, truly 
Your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets. Since you could reveal these secrets, praise God. Verse 48, then the king promoted Daniel. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many gifts. And he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. A slave boy became the ruler of town. Praise God. The king handed Daniel the entire key to Babylon. Praise God. Why? Value. Praise God. That's amazing. Daniel chapter 2 verse 46 to 48. The king handed the entire key of the nation to Daniel. Why? Value. Praise God. Daniel was the one ruling over Babylon because Daniel carried value above everybody else in Babylon. Praise the Lord. Friends, it's not about who you are or where you're from. It's about the capacity you have in dealing with the crisis of men. Praise the Lord. Daniel was an interesting character. Daniel did not only reign that this uh, reign of of Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel also was a member of the cabinet of three other kings. In other words, Daniel was a member of the cabinet of four kings at least that ruled over Babylon. Praise God. Now we understand that every president or every ruler that comes into power, one of the first things they do is to come with their own cabinet. There is no president that comes into power and maintains the staff of the previous previous president. Every president, when they come in, what they do is they bring their own staff with them. Yet, four kings could not resist Daniel. Four kings could not reject Daniel. He served under each of them. Praise God. The first one saw him and served and kept him. The second one came and said, no, I can't let this boy go. He kept him. The third one came and said, no, I can't let this boy go. He kept him. The fourth one came again and said, no, I can't let this boy go. He kept him. Four kings that ruled over Babylon could not reject one man. Why? Value. Praise God. It's all about value. Look at what the Bible says here. And then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many gifts. Another translation says, and lavished him with many gifts. Praise God. May men lavish you with gifts in the name of Jesus. Friends, it comes from value. Capacity to meet the needs and solve the problems of men and make their lives better. This is what makes the difference. Everything comes out of it. Everything that comes to you begins from the values within you. Everything that is around you begins from within you. Praise God. Promotion comes from the value within you. Wealth comes on the account of value within you. Honor comes on the account of value on the inside of you. Men will not just honor you. No. The world will not just honor you. They are too arrogant to honor you. They will only honor you when you come with something that they have never seen before. When you come with solutions to the crisis that plague their lives. May that become you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is what makes the difference. Friends, nobody just receives a Nobel Prize because they are a professor. No. Or because they are a doctor or because they are in a particular field of life. No. Nobel Prizes are given to men on the account of their contribution to making humanity better. Praise God. That is how it works in life. Men will not just honor you or respect you. You are a leader. That's not why they honor you. They may obey you because they are afraid of you and they don't want to offend you. But that's not honor. They will only honor you according to your positive contributions in the direction of their lives. I pray that that grace comes upon you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Friends, as we begin to wind down, let's begin to understand that the priority then is not money. The priority is not honor. It's not wealth. The priority is not to be respected. The priority first is to begin to build value on the inside of you. Value is the key. Value is the key to success. Value is the key to wealth. Value is the key to honor. Value is the key to promotion. Everything that comes to you comes on the account of the dimensions of value you have built on the inside of you. So let's begin to focus on value. Don't focus on money. Too many Christians spend too much time praying for money. It is good. Spend time looking for money. It is wonderful. But no, that is not the key. The key first is to build value. Looking for money outside value is like looking for an egg without the chicken. Praise God. The chicken must always come before the egg because the egg comes out of the chicken. 
It will not make sense to be to nurture the egg and decorate the egg and keep the egg and pay attention to the egg and neglect the chicken. When you neglect the chicken, you have neglected your future. Because when something happens to that egg, you have no other chicken to manufacture the egg. Praise God. This is why people lose their jobs and they are depressed. Because they cannot see where another job is coming from. But there are people that lose their jobs and they go to sleep. They know that based on the value on the inside of them, they cannot be unemployed for long. Somebody will come looking for them. Why? Value. Don't place the egg before the chicken. Nurture the chicken so that when the egg is not there, you can produce more eggs. Praise God. Build value on the inside of you. Spend time in generating value. Remember Isaac. Isaac was a young man who... The Bible says in Genesis 26 that he, he dug a well and the men of Jera came and took it from him. He didn't bother. He went somewhere else to dig a second one. Now he dug a second one. These guys came back again, quarreled with him and took the well from him. But Isaac did not pay them attention. He went to dig a third one. You know why Isaac, Isaac did not bother fighting or contending against these men? Because Isaac knew where the well was coming from. These guys thought that the well was in the ground. No, they did not understand. The well was not in the ground. The well was in the man. Wherever the man is, that is where the well is. Praise God. Friends, it does not matter what men take from you. As long as you have built wells on the inside of you, they cannot stop your journey. Praise God. I pray that from today, you will become unstoppable in the mighty name of Jesus. Spend time in building wells on the inside of you. Spend time in building wells, capacity to address the crisis of life on the inside of you. This is what makes the difference in our individual journeys on the face of this earth. Friends, as we begin to wind down, please spend time building values on the inside of you. Build up yourself, build up capacity on the inside of you to be able to address the crisis of the lives of men. The more crisis, the more problems you are able to address, the more men will seek you. Praise God. And the more they seek you, the more they bless you. Praise God. Spend time in building up yourself. Pay attention to activities of value. Let everything about your life speak of value. Let your friends be friends that carry value. Everybody around you must be people that add value to your life. If they are not adding value to your life, they cannot take you to where you are going to. Praise God. They must be people of value. Only people that carry value can add value to your life. There are many Christians who are surrounded by mediocrity and they want excellence. It does not work like that. Surrounded by non-entities and you want to go somewhere. Anybody in your life who has no value cannot give you value. Anybody in your life who does not have respect for their future cannot respect your future. And anybody in your life who is going nowhere can take you nowhere. You need people of value to build value within on, on the inside of you. You cannot fly. It doesn't matter whether you are an eagle, as long as you are surrounded by chicken, it is impossible to fly. Dr. Miles Monroe was sharing with us some time ago, before he, he, he moved on to glory, he was sharing with us in one of his books that there was a lion that grew up with sheep, was raised by sheep, fed by sheep, and nurtured into maturity by sheep. So everything he knew was the ways of the sheep. Praise God. And he said that one time a pack of lions came to attack the sheep and all the sheep fled and the lion also fled with the sheep what happened here mentality what kind of mentality has he developed he had developed the mentality of the sheep because he was raised and grew up with sheep so the lions will chase the sheep the sheep will run and this lion also will run with the sheep praise god until one day that the, he saw an image of himself when he went to drink water and looked through the water on the surface of the water and was looking at himself say wait a minute i don't look like the people i'm running with and the people that are chasing us, I look just like them. One day he stood his ground. When the lions came again and roared, this lion roared back at them. And they said, welcome to the park. You were never the one we were chasing. The people we've been chasing have already taken flight. He was not the one they were after. But because he was raised in a pack of sheep, he had developed the mentality of the sheep. So he ran with them. That is what happens when you surround yourself with sheep. That is what happens when you surround yourself with chicken. You can be an eagle as long as you are surrounded by chicken, you cannot fly. You need eagles around you to make you fly. It's only eagles that can release the potential that are locked up in the eagle. Praise God. 
Spend time with the right people. Surround yourself with the right people. Read the right books, the books that will add value to your life. Not entertainment magazines that will only inspire gossips. Read books that will add value to your life. Watch TV programs and TV shows that will add value to your life. Everything about your life must add value to your life until that comes, until you get to that place. Friends, life is always a struggle. But I pray that from today, the wisdom to do the right thing will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will walk this earth and you will be a woman of value, a man of value. Long after you are gone, they will still be talking about you in the precious name of Jesus. Friends, let's end with this scripture. Mark chapter 3 verse 17. You know, I was always wondering, why is it that Christ took three guys everywhere he went? Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Everywhere he went, these three guys were with him. He had 12 disciples, but not everybody went everywhere with him. Everywhere he went, these three guys were always there with him. And I began to wonder why. I found the answer here. Mark chapter 3 verse 17. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, two brothers, to whom he gave, Christ gave them, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, Boanerges that is, the sons of thunder. He called these two, these two brothers the sons of thunder. There was something he saw in them, that he looked at them and said, wait a minute, these guys are too good, and he called them sons of thunder. So everywhere he went, Peter already we know, he called out Peter, the rock. And now he called these two guys sons of thunder. So everywhere he went, he went with the rock and sons of thunder. He was God. He was God. He is still God. Yet on earth, as he walked on the earth as a man, everywhere he went, he went with his best. Men of value he carried with him. Friends, it's important to understand this dimension. You cannot rise beyond your association. Surround yourself with value, I say again. Surround yourself with men of value, books of value, TV shows of value, think thoughts of value. Let everything about you speak towards value. And as you build value on the inside of you, you get to a place where men can no longer reject you. Men can no longer resist you and men can no longer stop you. May that be the story of your life. I decree concerning your life that you will fulfill your purpose. You will not short-circuit your own destiny. Long after you are gone, what you have done on the earth will still be speaking in the name of Jesus. Friends, we have come to the end of today's session. I hope you were blessed by today's teaching, the law of value. But before we close, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life over to Jesus if you're not born again yet. Give your life over to Christ. I always say life without Christ is a life of crisis. It begins in Him. Praise God. There is no value outside Christ. Praise the Lord. You want to give your life to Christ? Please bow your head with me and pray this simple prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. Forgive me all my sins and write my name in the book of life. From today, I believe in my heart and I declare with my mouth that you are the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations if you prayed that prayer with me and welcome to God's own family, the family of value. I pray that from today, the grace to begin to build value on the inside of you will rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, we have come to the end of today's session. I thank you for taking time to join us on today's uh, teaching. I do hope you were blessed. Uh, please do me one favor. Share this broadcast with your friends. If you know you were blessed by what you heard today, be a blessing to somebody in the name of Jesus. I look forward to sharing God's word with you again next week. Until then, please stay safe, stay well, be blessed, stand strong, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah.